Entering the H5N1 blur bird flu outbreak in animals on farms across America. The disease is not believed to be spreading widely among humans yet. There's only one confirmed case and broader indicators such as the number of flu tests ordered don't show signs of widespread human transmission. But with the virus showing up at high rates in cows and farms blocking the CDC from conducting tests, it's not clear how much of a threat this virus is to humans. Let's bring in America Tonight medical contributor Dr. Omar Awan. He's written on this in his weekly column for Forbes, walking through what we need to know about the H5N1 bird flu. Thank you for being with us, Dr. Awan. Just this week, the CDC encouraged states to make PPE available to people who work with livestock. So how close is this flu strain to developing the ability to infect humans on a widespread level? Well, we don't know yet, Maritza, but it doesn't appear to be a big public health concern yet. And I think yet is the key word. Uh, apparent, obviously, it's been infecting animals like birds, cattle, poultry at a very high level. But the key here is that there hasn't been a high level of sustained human to human transmission. Now, there have been two confirmed cases of bird flu in the United States a period, like one in 2022 in Colorado, and then of course, you know, one here in Texas in 2024. But, you know, and both of those cases were not human to human transmission. They were actually from uh, a human being being in the vicinity of an infected animal. So, you know, there has not been human to human mm -hmm. transmission, although there has been globally. But the key here is, will there be sustained human to human transmission as we saw in the COVID pandemic? And it appears that that has not been the case. So good news, but of course, viruses, as we know, can mutate. They can mutate very fast and things can change very rapidly. So really important for us to keep an eye on this and have a high level of surveillance to make sure that things don't get out of hand. I think after COVID, we hear, you know, it's unknown and, and that's a little scary. So why don't we know more about this yet? Well, part of it is we there hasn't been enough testing. So part of it is the fact that, you know, we've tested, you know, dairy cattle, but we've only recently tested beef cattle, but this testing really should have been done weeks ago. And this is uh, a problem. And I worry about our response to pandemics and to viruses because we haven't quite learned all the lessons we needed to learn from the COVID pandemic. There should be a higher level of surveillance, higher levels of research into these type of viruses, uh, higher funding and investment into making sure that we're, you know, getting all the data that we possibly can. We have not done that. And we're sort of acting in a reactionary manner as opposed to being proactive. So that's part of it. And the other part is, is that we don't really know how many people have had the bird flu in humans. A lot of people can be asymptomatic. There are farmers that may get it and may have only mild symptoms and they're reluctant to get tested. So we honestly don't have a good grasp of how many people have it and how contagious it really is. There have only been two confirmed cases in America ever, but that number could be much higher. And we just don't know because people aren't really getting tested. And people were sounding the alarm before COVID. Scientists were saying, you know, we need to update this so that we're better prepared for something like this. And then we went through the pandemic. One thing that came up after COVID emerged was this, this idea that as long as we continue to interact with animals the way we do, we're going to continue to see these kinds of viruses mutate and, and jump species. So how do we address that globally? We have to be more vigilant, Maritza, about surveillance. We have to you know, once a virus is detected, we have to be able to test these animals. We have to have a high level of surveillance. And this has to be a public health priority. We can't react to, you know, animals being tested positive and then, you know, set aside programs only when an X number of animals are infected or an X number of humans become infected. It has to be a proactive approach. And this is hopefully what we've learned from the COVID-19 pandemic in order for us to really uh, be at the forefront of preventing these type of viruses from spreading globally and certainly within America. This has to be a priority and this has to be a public health priority laid down, you know, by the federal government. And of course, you know, the WHO and the CDC have to follow suit with this. Dr. Awan, just a minute left, but what should we do if we have pets or say like where I live, a lot of people have backyard chickens and ducks. What should we be doing? Well, be very careful and be very vigilant in interacting with them, especially if they are sick in any way, shape or form. Uh, try to limit your exposure. But if you do, if you're a farmer and you have to interact with them, 
wear personal protective equipment, things like gloves, goggles, even a mask potentially to prevent uh, the ability to get infected through their uh, you know, saliva, um, respiratory particles, that type of stuff. And if you are feeling sick or if you have a fever, cough, sore throat, runny nose, watery eyes, some of the symptoms that are present in bird flu and just any influenza type of flu, please go to the hospital, get tested. It's just a nasal swab or a throat swab. Very easy to get tested. Please don't delay and please take care of yourself. Okay, America Tonight medical contributor, Dr. Omar Awan. I have a feeling we may be talking more about this. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Hopefully not, but my pleasure. <laughs> Hopefully not. Still